I would like to call our second speaker on the opposition side of the motion, Councillor Rod Cantrell. Rod Cantrell has been a city councillor for Newnham Ward in Cambridge since 2004, taking a leading role in climate initiatives and fighting for the city council here to aim to be carbon neutral earlier than planned. He was the Liberal Democrat parliamentary candidate in the 2019 general election. And a great laugh. Rod, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. So, I'm sitting on a really small chair. My knees are touching my chin. There are bees and birds on the wall. And in front of me are two dozen small inquisitors. Now, no, this is not a chapter from um, Alice in Wonderland. This is my experience in the general election visiting a local primary school and talking to nine and ten-year-olds about any subject. And the subject they only wanted to talk about and scrutinize me on was climate change. And you know what it's like with young children? They tend to be pretty direct and to the point. And actually, unlike adults, Experienced politicians can kind of bat the questions away and so forth, but with small children, you feel very vulnerable. And I struggled to articulate an argument to the question that they put was, how was I going to stop climate change and to stop the destruction of their planet? And the evidence is compelling. We are destroying our planet at an increasing rate. Carbon emissions have increased by 20% over the last four years. Ice sheets are melting faster than ever before, five mil every year. And we see it here locally in Cambridge. Our water is literally running out. The chalk streams that supply this city are drying up. Now, I'm tempted when I read every new piece of evidence like that to think the cake's baked. We've already cooked a dangerous climate for those young school children I was chatting to in the general election last year and for their kids. We are doomed. We are doomed to environmental catastrophe. We're doomed to collapse of civilized society. We're doomed to destroy the world as we know it. And, you know, at this point, you may think, well, actually, I'm going to go for the blanket and the duvet and watch Netflix and just bury my head in the sand and kind of ignore it. But actually, and at one level, that type of language of it all being too late is an effective one. It's cast in terms, and very recently, cast in terms of the concept of, like, diffusing the bomb. The clock is ticking. We're running out of time. If we don't diffuse the bomb in time, everything will explode. And in my view, that has been very effective for actually getting people's attention. It's been very effective for getting large numbers of people, very recently in the last year or so, to actually be a voice, a voice for change. And importantly, it's been very effective in terms of getting the political class to stand up or sit up and listen. Now, clearly, the best time to act to stop climate change would have been 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 10 years ago. But my argument in this debate is that the second best time to act is now. It's now that we should be acting. And clearly, radical action needs to be undertaken on an international level and on a national level, as previous speakers have referenced. But one can also take action, radical action, locally. And in many ways, Local action tends to be the most effective action for dealing, uh, uh, to, for dealing 
with the issue of climate change. People in their communities, in their neighborhoods, and in our towns and cities. And here in Cambridge, this city does have a track record of a radical approach to climate change and tackling the climate crisis. For over 15 years, we were one of the first councils to sign the Nottingham Declaration in the mid-2000s, acknowledging that there was a climate crisis and committing to undertaking a systematic approach within the council and across the city to tackling it. Putting in place a first climate strategy in the late 2000s, 2008, incorporating climate change and sustainability in everything the council did. And you may say, well, you know, politicians, that's all policy, that's, that's kind of paper, right? What tangible evidence can I demonstrate to you that that was the case? Well, I can demonstrate it in many ways. I can demonstrate it in both small and large. This city council has planted more trees in the last 10 years, most probably than any other authority locally. This city council was the first one to actually contemplate sustainability in terms of the local plan, how we build buildings. And more importantly, this was the first council to actually build two large passive housing schemes in this city, Marmalade Lane and Verido, on council land. Passive housing, where actually the use of energy is almost zero. So you may be saying, well, it's easy for him to wrap himself in warm, warm, to wrap himself in warm words, to kind of champion the achievements to date, but it doesn't really address what the motion is getting to. And actually, I tend to agree with you that we should not be sitting on our laurels. And that's why I called for a climate emergency in the City Council last year. And I called for a target of 2030, a very ambitious target for the city to be carbon neutral. Because I believe that actually we are at this critical time, that it's not too late Yes, sir. What was the outcome of the week for the sure. What was the outcome of calling for those two measures? So the outcome, sir, was that the City Council um, voted for a climate emergency, but didn't attach a specific date. So it was open-ended. Um, but I believe that it is a critical time, that it's not too late, but we have to have a sense of urgency. And we also have to have a vision to bring people along with us that actually we can achieve that change and address the climate crisis. And here in Cambridge, here in a city where basically we have some of the brightest minds in the world, we should set that bar, that ambition, that vision high. We should basically say that we want to be the greenest city, the greenest city in the UK. We should do that by speeding up investment in terms of sustainable transport. We're all polluting ourselves in this city because of the volume of cars that are on the streets. We should do that by saying every new house we build is passive. Every existing house is retrofitted to be passive. And I believe we should go further. We should actually say we should create a climate commission here in Cambridge, bringing all those experts together to actually kind of undertake the research and development needed to address the fundamental issues that climate change brings. So, Chair, I believe that actually it is not too late to act when it comes to climate change. Because with crisis, becomes, with crisis comes opportunity, a chance to build a future that is in balance with the earth and with one another. And Chair, I would end by saying that 
it's not, the question is not whether maybe it's too late to stop climate change, but at what point will each one of us, each one of you, step up and take action? Is it when the oceans warm to a level where all the coral life is destroyed? Is it when a storm destroys your home or your neighborhood? So the question you should be asking is what is your limit before you take that action? Thank you, Mr. President.